Hello everyone, this is William Chang here, and today I would like to discuss how to teach elementary school kids using Zoom. Now we have to teach through Zoom because we are in the digital age and also because of the COVID pandemic. And before we begin, a few things about my teaching experience. I've taught five classes so far, three for reading and discussion, and two for singing, namely Christmas songs. I also have been a TA for my choir for two years now, and I just really, really love teaching kids from kindergarten to fifth grade. It's a very enriching experience, and I'm sure if you put your mind into it, you will find that the same way as I do. We will get started now. So there's three main things that I would like to bring up today. First, it's how to set clear class rules and be kind but firm. This is really important if you want a orderly class. Second, a few Zoom issues to be aware of because Zoom, although it may seem like a good teaching tool, is not always per perfect. And last but not least, I want to bring up a few tips to make the class interesting. So as I said, I taught three reading and discussion classes. I, For this class, I taught Sean Covey's Seven Habits of Happy Kids. So here you see the class rules slide that I displayed on the first class of each cycle. So just include some very simple class rules such as keep cameras and mics on and notice that I put a few visuals or pictures here. That's because kids learn best visually and this big picture here as well. Because you need to keep them hooked, keep them wanting to learn, and they learn best visually, so it would be best if you could put in a lot of pictures. But you don't want to put in too many, or you don't want to be too messy or dirty with those pictures, or else it kind of goes back on its purpose. All right. This is a sample of one of my agendas for my classes. Again, Pretty simplistic. More visuals, the better. Clean colors, simplistic pictures, not too many, not too messy. All right, I want to bring up a few safety concerns and issues with Zoom. So first, the participants box. It is best to keep an eye on all of the students attending because especially if they get kicked out of your class, not on purpose, then you want a way that you can monitor and easily let them back in. The second is the security box. Be sure to check all of your security settings. I like to use the waiting room because that enhances encryption and the amount of people entering. The stronger the security, the better. And Zoom bombing. When this happens, click end meeting as fast as possible. So in case you didn't know what Zoom bombing is, it's when a uh, anonymous or random person just comes into a Zoom meeting and displays uh, racial or ethnic slurs against one and maybe your class. So when this happens, be sure to click end as fast as possible so that you can quickly dispose of this quote unquote intruder. Don't try to kick uh, whoever that is out because it takes time and it doesn't always work. All right, we will move on. So the following are a few tips to make the class interesting. First of all, you want to give every kid the chance to talk and shine because this is really what the parents and your students really care about. It's if the child gets enough chances to speak 
to talk, to express their own opinions. This is what they really care about. And it's also really, really smart to keep a class participation roster because this way you know who has gone and who has not. And this also makes it much harder for kids to go astray or to lose focus because they know that they're going to be called on and they have to focus or else they won't know what to say when their turn comes. The next tip is really helpful if the book or material that you're teaching has some kind of visual or some kind of picture. I know that annotation can be a toy during class, but it's also a tool for engagement. So here, I just taught my lesson and I had the kids doodle. And it turned out to be really, really fun. And this also helps with engagement because the kids actually have something to do, something to take from it. So I really recommend this strategy. And what about wait times? During wait, when your kids trickle into class, Play some music while waiting for kids to join the class. Just remember, music can't be jumpy because then your students will be too jumpy. I like to play some classical music while they come in, but it's up to you. Tongue twisters are also quick and they are fun time fillers, just like she sells seashells by the seashore. I do know that my kids had an excellent time doing that. Also, if you have complicated material or books, yeah, list out the vocabulary and clearly explain so that they really understand and later have them be little detectives and see if they can figure out what each word means. This worked out really, really well with all of my classes and all of my students as they really, really enjoyed it. So here we have some of the vocab from one of the stories that we read. And now I want to talk about homework. Homework shouldn't be necessary. It's more of voluntary. So if the kids do turn in homework, remember to give them appropriate homework. Don't make it too big of an assignment or too small. And if kids turn it in, encourage them. This way, others will say, oh, well, she got encouraged. Why don't I do some work as well? So some really simple homework just like this listed below. So this is one of uh, actually two of my students sample homework. This is what you may expect out of these kids. And really, what I did was encourage them so more students were able to get the motivation to do their homework. And also, let the kids help their parents with end-of-class feedbacks. Feedback is really important because you need to know how you can improve in order to know what to do next time or what not to do next time. Tell the kids to get their voice heard by helping their parents to fill out the two-minute survey. Here is my feedback that I received from my classes. Now let's look at a few resources for volunteer teaching. And by resources, I mean where you can teach for nonprofit organizations. If you don't plan on finding your students on your own and doing all of the work on your own, you can join one of these organizations like Wave Learning Festival. The AOA, which I am in, which stands for Alliance of Academic Achievement, or you can sign up to teach at UST or you start teaching. So these are only three examples of where you can teach. There are many more. So if you're interested, just look into where you can teach and maybe you'll find the perfect place. And I want to leave you on this note. It's the end of this presentation and I just want you to know when you teach elementary school kids, this experience is really, really 
fun and rewarding. It's just very cool to be teaching others, to be spreading your own skill around. It's helping others in a way that you know of your own. All right. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.